They may be small, but don't let that trick you into thinking that bugs are not trouble. In fact, that couldn't be further from the truth. We've all seen a bug's life. These little guys can cause a ton of trouble, because when it comes to the animal kingdom, size truly doesn't matter. The little guy can sometimes have the biggest bite. These are the 20 deadly insects you don't want to mess with. Number 20. Centipedes Now, if you're one of those people who really hates it when we tell you about that centipede that's gonna crawl all over your face, then you might want to close your eyes and hum yourself a little tune for the next couple of minutes. The house centipede is an insect that, yes, as the name would suggest, can be found in houses. People's houses, to be precise. They began as native to the Mediterranean region, but have made their way around the world and have populations in all sorts of other places, maybe even your house. These centipedes have 15 pairs of long and delicate legs, using these to run about up walls and crawl across the ceiling and your face at great speeds during the night. They do this mostly to catch other insects to eat, but also it's just a little bit about freaking you out. Despite all of it, they're not actually going to do you any harm. In fact, depending on how you look at it, the house centipede is really kind of beneficial. They eat all of the grossest household pests like bed bugs, termites, and cockroaches. Although, if you do have all of those, then a little old centipede is the least of your worries. Then there are giant centipedes that are a completely different story. These massive centipedes are often over 12 inches long, and they use their super size to hunt some pretty large prey. Amongst the giant centipede's favorite dinners are other insects, especially the spider, scorpions, and millipedes. They also enjoy small mammals like mice and bats, and even the odd bird or frog. This should give you a clue about just how big these things can get. And before you go thinking that they are only really preying on such miniature creatures, well, humans are not entirely safe from the giant centipede. They have a venomous bite, which is a danger to people, and there's even been a death recorded as a result of a bite from one of these bugs. So that is all most reassuring then. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Now it's time for the sweet topic. Let's take a moment to chat about the goat moth caterpillar. These absolute goliaths are true brutes of the moth world, sometimes picking a wingspan of up to 95 millimeters. The larva can even reach a gargantuan 10 centimeters, but they're not only huge, they're also beautiful. Their gray coloring with black and white markings gives them the appearance of cracked wood, meaning that despite their huge size, they can actually hide pretty easily. They're also quite rare, only living in a handful of very specific places in England. But what makes them deadly? Well, while not deadly to humans, they can be deadly to your home and structures. These creatures have a habit of boring through wood, nibbling away at it at an alarming speed. And if left to their own devices, they can destroy the foundations of sheds and other wooden structures. And when you take that into account, they can disguise themselves as wood due to their appearance and go undetected for a long stretch of time. It should come as no surprise that they can do some real damage. Do you own a cabin in the UK? Well, keep an eye out for these devils. As always, you can let me know your thoughts in the comment section down below using the hashtag Sweet Topic. Number 19 lice. Ugh, there is nothing likable about these insects. They are gross parasites that hang around on their host, which is usually a human, and they suck on their blood. Head lice are most common kind of lice, and there are actually many species of them. They're all partial to human blood and setting up home in human hair. <laughs> Head lice move from person to person by crawling between them. That's why they're most commonly found amongst preschool and elementary school age children, as they're often in close proximity to one another, providing a suitable facility for head lice to travel freely from head to head. Once a female louse has found a host, it will then lay eggs with wild abandon at the base of the hair shaft nearest to the scalp. These eggs are also called nits, and they'll hatch within eight or nine days, setting off yet more reproducing of laying of eggs until the hair is well infested and crawling with these horrors. Are you feeling itchy yet? Number 18. Monarch Butterfly Now, they may be beautiful, but it's also apparently one of the most dangerous on the planet. 
I mean, what? The monarch butterfly larva is extremely poisonous and could actually kill a human if you were bonkers enough to snack on one. This is because the caterpillar eats milkweed almost exclusively, and that stuff contains a toxin that is really not ideal for people to go around consuming. In fact, the monarch caterpillar not only munches freely on nasty old milkweed, it actually stores that poisonous junk inside of its own body. This makes that little critter into a super toxic death monger to any animal or indeed person that may be daft enough to consume it. Naturally, as a personal defense system, this is not tremendously effective since the caterpillar will also be dead along with the creature that consumed it. But you know, evolution has served to be effective enough that these insects are not the favorite meal of other animals. They even stay super toxic when they're all beautiful and fluttery. So even though I know that you really want to, you shouldn't go around eating butterflies because it may just wind up being your last meal. Number 17. The Blister Beetle Next up, we have the blister beetle. These insects are super poisonous and can actually be deadly to both humans and animals, except for the very few which we'll get to shortly. Even though you as a sensible human being probably don't much fancy a beetle-based snackette, there are plenty of animals that are partial to this particular sort of crunch morsel. Farm animals are especially susceptible to being poisoned, usually inadvertently, when the alfalfa hay that they're fed accidentally contains a bunch of squashed up old blister beetles. This can happen as they often hang about in these sorts of crops and may even be getting caught up in the stuff which is then harvested as animal feed. The trouble is that even only a few ground up blister beetles can contain enough of a dangerous chemical to literally choke out a horse. There are a few animals that can go around eating these deadly insects and suffer no ill effects whatsoever. They include the spur-winged geese, which seem to love nothing more than snarfing themselves with toxic bugs. But be warned, the toxin in these insects, once it's been eaten by the goose, is then stored in the bird's tissues, meaning that even a cooked goose will still be poisonous, and a 10 milligram dosage of this poison is sufficient enough to actually kill a human. So, you know, choose your Christmas dinner goose with extreme caution. Number 16. Flea Now it may be very small, but the flea is one of the biggest mass murderers in the history of the world, second only to the mosquito in its deadly veracity. Even though the Black Death or the bubonic plague was blamed on all manner of things from bad air to evil doings, the real cause would be much less significant and could find its way almost everywhere completely unchecked. The real spreaders of this deadly disease were rat fleas. That's right! Not only are rats super gross and capable of spreading a whole raft of nasty germs all by themselves, they're also carrying passengers with their own hideous deadly disease spreading abilities, the very worst kind of two-for-one deal. The fun thing is that these fleas not only spread the bubonic plague by biting people, they're also able to transmit other infinitely unpleasant infections like tapeworms and other fun parasites that can carry life-threatening diseases as well. What a fun one! There are, of course, regular old cat and dog fleas, which are unwelcome and preventable visitors, but unfortunately, they do sometimes turn up in your home anyway. So, you'll need to treat the pariah of a pet to stop the fleas from breeding on their furry host. Once you've successfully defleed your pet, you then may well need to deflee your entire house. Carpets, bedding, and even the floorboards all offer these itch-making critters places to hide and hatch and make a ruddy nuisance out of themselves. These persistent insects do take some shifting. First, you're going to have to wash all of your bedding and throws and pillows, you know, everything that's made of fabric basically, in some hot water with detergent. Then vacuum everything else, which includes your carpets, your floors, between the boards, and even the linoleum curtains and everything. Then you're going to have to use a chemical flea control treatment. This is really the only way to actually kill the fleas, or I guess you could spend the money and call in an exterminator. Then after all of that work, be sure to keep your pet flea free with regular treatments, or you may have to end up doing it all over again. Number 15. The Assassin Caterpillar these caterpillars, although they eventually turn into the kind of pretty brown silkworm moth, is actually a super deadly poisoner of the most dangerous sort. 
Yes, these caterpillars are found all over South America, and despite their innocuous appearance, they're absolutely toxic to humans, and not in a regular sort of poison you and you drop dead sort of way. This is a long and very painful and thorough process. They will really kill you quite completely from the inside out, and it's not going to be pretty. It begins when one of their spines pokes into you and then delivers a special sort of venom. These spines are very pointy and they will detach easily so that this is more likely than it might seem. Then that venom will prevent your blood from clotting. A little bit of this might not be enough to kill you, but just a bit too much and that venom is going to do some serious damage. Ultimately spreading into your vital organs, which includes your brain, and causing a massive hemorrhage. Of course, a person is big and a caterpillar is small, and it would take a whole lot of stings to cause that much venom to be administered, but it is probably not worth the risk of experimenting now, is it? Number 14. The Kissing Bug Where some insect bites are small and neat, the kissing bug likes to make a right meal out of it. They'll often bite over and over again in the same area, causing a lot of marks clustered together. Oh, and their favorite places to bite are around the eyeballs and the mouth, hence that charming name. The trouble with these gross creatures, apart from being pretty horrible of course, is that they're also known to spread a really terrible disease that can lie dormant in the body for 10 to 30 years before popping back up and killing you dead. That is Chug's disease, and it's actually carried by a parasite that lives in the poop of the kissing bug. So basically, you only really get that disease if that bug bites you and has the parasite, and then it poops near where it bites you, and then that poop gets rubbed into the bite or your eyes or your mouth or ugh, wherever they may like to bite you. It is gross, gross, gross. And now I'm getting super paranoid. They're mostly found in South and Central America, but there are increased reports of these insects all across the southern parts of North America. This is not cool, and I do not like it. Number 13. The Tsetse Fly Well, this little fly is the stuff of horrific nightmares. If you could conceive of a really nasty and dangerous creature, you may be unlikely to come up with something so innocuous as a small fly. However, the tsetse fly not only has a horrible bite, but it could actually kill you. The tsetse fly's mouth is full of serrated parts that literally saw into your skin to suck out your blood. A bite from one of these things hurts, but it doesn't end there. These hideous bugs will also transmit diseases, and not just the common cold either. These blighters are gobbing a deadly disease known as sleeping sickness into the veins of their victims. The disease is passed on by a parasite that some flies can transmit in their gross little mouth juice when they bite someone. If left untreated, the victim then falls into a deep and ultimately fatal sleep. But sometimes the parasite is able to lay dormant in the human body for years before suddenly then taking hold and plunging the infected person into a dark and possibly endless slumber. Despite its diminutive size, the fly is as powerful as an evil fairy tale witch, only the tsetse fly doesn't care who it curses. Number 12. Mosquito When you consider that mosquitoes can spread infections like malaria, dengue fever, and the Zika virus, along with the West Nile virus, well, it's probably best to avoid a mozzie bite whenever possible. Often, the pests are the most irritating in outside areas when you might want to enjoy a warm evening. There are things that you can do and plant to put the mosquitoes off, like trying lavender, rosemary, and sage on your patio. You can also remove or treat anywhere with standing water in your yard. Mozzies lay their eggs in water, which is gross. Inside, you can sleep under mosquito nets, and they can be quite romantic if you're into a princessy sort of style, of course. Or you can even try a plug-in repellent. This will send out a consistent bug-zapping toxin, but if you want a more natural alternative, try burning sage and rosemary, because it has the added benefit of feeling a bit witchy. So it's a win-win, really. The big bad bug killer that is the fallback when all else fails is to use any of the available mosquito repellents that contain DEET. This stuff is one surefire way to keep the pesky biters away. Always use as directed. Don't be silly now. Number 11. Indian Red Scorpion Although we may imagine that all scorpions are pretty dangerous, actually, out of the 1,500 species that are known, 
Only a few dozen are venomous, but the Indian red scorpion is one of those venomous ones, and it is the most deadly. 40% of people who are stung by these particular scorpions are killed by the venom. That's not an especially reassuring figure. These insects live in India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal, and have been a major issue because they have a nasty habit of hanging out where children love to play, usually barefoot. These arachnids, because actually that's what they are and not insects, are generally nocturnal, but if they're disturbed or they feel threatened, that's when they're going to sting. If you were to be unfortunate enough to be stung by an Indian red scorpion, you may anticipate the following delightful symptoms. Extreme pain, followed by sweating, vomiting, breathlessness, and then an alternating high and low blood pressure as well as crazy heart rate. Finally, that venom will head to your heart and lungs, which can result in your death. Shall we move swiftly on then? Number 10. The Death Stalker Scorpion Well, the next one isn't much of an improvement, I'm afraid. In fact, with a name like the Death Stalker Scorpion, it isn't even pretending to be anything less than murderous. This extremely venomous scorpion is found all throughout North Africa, the Middle East, and Central Asia. And although one bite from one of these things is unlikely to do you in, it will not exactly be a picnic either. Oh, oh, oh. it cheesed. It's cheesing, it's cheesing. It can be deadly to children, however, and if stung, a child will actually need a lot more antivenom than an adult will in order to recover. Here's a top tip in case you ever have this nightmare. However, the Death Stalker Scorpion's venom, although deadly, is actually one of the most expensive and sought after liquids in the world. It is, naturally, rather difficult to get a hold of, hence its super expensive price tag, but it's doing incredible work as part of some of the most groundbreaking cancer treatments. Weird, huh? Number 9. The Black Widow Spider One of the most famous of all spiders, the Black Widow, has a deadly sounding name and a bit of a reputation for some rather unorthodox postcoital habits. These notorious spiders are venomous, although the idea of them seems to be to produce fear in people that may well outweigh their ability to kill you dead. Which they can do, by the way, but perhaps less often than you may expect. In fact, you are most likely to be the victim of a black widow if you're a male black widow spider. The antisocial female will spend her time alone for the entire year, except for those brief moments in the mating season in which she will mate and then more often than not will terminate the romantic liaison by eating her partner. But anyways, why should you run away from the Black Widow, even if you are not a spider? Well, their bite is alleged to be 15 times more powerful than that of a rattlesnake's. One bite from a Black Widow will likely make you very poorly indeed. Their venom can induce nausea, muscle pain, and can even paralyze the diaphragm and make it difficult to breathe. Luckily, fatalities are rare as the spiders don't generally go around biting people all willy-nilly. They bite only in self-defense. Children, the elderly, or even people who are sick are most at risk from a Black Widow bite. But even if you aren't any of these sorts of people, please don't poke a Black Widow. That's just rude, and these ladies aren't taking any nonsense. Number 8. The Brazilian Wandering Spider The distinctly sinister-sounding wandering spider has the dubious privilege of being considered the world's most venomous spider by the Guinness Book of World Records. But just how bad could it really be? Well, it turns out that it could be very, very bad indeed. So, if you yourself are wandering in the Brazilian forest, you should be careful where you step. These extraordinary arachnids don't build webs to catch their prey. They wander around on the forest floor during the night and hunt them down. This scary spider is a fan of both ambush hunting and the classic direct attack. Although they do mainly hunt and eat other spiders and insects, the creatures are also known to munch on mice, reptiles, and amphibians. And so, they won't bite a human in order to eat it as such, but it will bite if threatened or surprised, and it's going to hurt. A bite from a Brazilian wandering spider will usually go like this. It begins with extreme burning pain where the victim was bitten, followed by sweating and goosebumps, and then the nasty stuff which can include high or low blood pressure and fast or slow heartbeat. This will vary as the body tries to figure out how to handle the systemic attack, and then a combination of sickness, stomach pains, vertigo, blurred vision, hypothermia, heavy sweating, convulsions, and a lot of other things will set in. 
Of course, the severity of the reaction is going to depend on how much venom is actually in that bite, but you can never tell that until it's too late. The good news, though, is if you are unlucky enough to be bitten by one of these spiders and you seek immediate medical treatment, it's probably going to fix you right up. Probably. The things they can do with antivenom and all of that are really amazing these days. Number 7. The Brown Recluse Spider One of the most venomous spiders in the United States, the recluse can be mainly found across the western and southern states. But they are fairly far-flung, so don't imagine that you're safe just because you live in the middle. These spiders can be found as far north as Ohio, Indiana, Illinois, Iowa, and Nebraska. And so, they are pretty much everywhere, really. You may know the recluse by a different name. They're often called violin spiders or fiddleback spiders on the account of the shape of the front of their bodies. But the thing to really watch out for with these creepy crawlies is the super nasty bite. Yes, these spiders have a necrotic bite, meaning that it causes death to body tissue. The venom in the recluse's spider bite destroys the blood vessels around the site of the bite and can make for a massive ulcer on the skin. The trouble with this is that these wounds can be extremely slow to heal, which makes them vulnerable to infection, and that's what can result in the death of a victim of this spider's bite. So that's all utterly charming, a long and slow death. Although it's important to say that deaths from these spider bites are rare, but I would still be very careful if I were you. Number 6. Ticks These unpleasant insects are really a health hazard and should be avoided as much as possible. Deer ticks are responsible for infecting people with Lyme disease. Thousands of people catch it that way every single year. Lyme disease is an unpleasant illness which begins with a tick bite that has a bull's eye kind of rash around it. Then, the following symptoms include fever and headache, along to the longer term with stiff joints, heart problems, and more. Although few people seem to die from the disease, it can be extremely unpleasant and sufferers may have a range of symptoms for many years to come. The ticks themselves live most of their lives out in the natural environment, and although their lifespan is generally two to three years long, they only spend a fraction of that time with their host. The average deer tick will have only three feeding sessions of blood of a host in their whole lifetime, and when the egg of a tick hatches, the creature that emerges is a larva. These larvae will feed once on a small mammal, like a mouse, and then they'll go and get a meal on whatever warm body is available. Perhaps even yours. Maybe a deer. They don't really care. Hopefully, they didn't pick up Lyme disease off of that mouse, and they only sucked it that one time, but once is really all it takes. Then they have one more season as a fully grown adult tick, and that's when they go around doing all the mating and whatnot and spreading all of the disease. Ugh, that's quite enough of that for now. Number 5. The Bullet Ant This is officially the insect with the world's most painful sting, so that sounds super fun. Their name apparently comes from the fact that a sting from one of these little blighters is akin to being shot by a bullet. And yes, you should probably run away from them. It's just the most sensible option. These ants live in tropical rainforests in a mainly and mercifully peaceful manner. They are not especially aggressive and will only sting when they're provoked. But if you do happen to upset one of these guys, then you can expect all of his friends to show up at the party and begin having a go at you as well. That's right, if you're unlucky enough to get stung by a single bullet ant, it's going to release a chemical that signals to all the other bullet ants nearby, and then they'll all dogpile on and sting the living daylights out of you. So if you happen to be in the rainforest, do be extra careful where you poke your fingers or toes, because if not, you're going to need to be prepared for a pain that is described in colorful detail as a blinding electric pain that repeats in waves of agony that last for up to 24 hours. Such fun. Number 4. Fire Ants Ants are super pesky pests, that's for sure, and once you find them in your garden or even a row of them marching into your kitchen, you know that you're in for some trouble. These teeny creatures can be tricky to get rid of once they've found a place to hang out, and fire ants suck even worse. If you've ever sat in the grass for a while before realizing that there is an ant's nest under your rear, 
Well, then you know, these little critters do bite. Fire ants are a bit of a different thing to regular ants, because these ones have a deadly weapon. They not only sting with stupendous zeal, but they're also partial to spraying formic acid on anything that they deem to be a threat. That is some nasty stuff that can cause a whole lot of pain, irritation to the skin, and if they get mad enough and spray enough of it, it can even spell death. How jolly. Number 3. The Asian Giant Hornet these extremely unpleasant insects go by another, less flattering, but extremely accurate moniker. The Asian giant hornet is the murder hornet. And with a name like that, you know that these things are trouble. In fact, they are more than just trouble. These Asian giant hornets are a genuine threat to the bee populations that exist everywhere. They actually seek out and target hives of honeybees to slaughter, and they do this by sending out workers which will spot colonies, and then they mark it with a pheromone. This is to help them find their way back so that they can return with a big gang of murderous buddies. And then the hornets do return in greater numbers, sometimes up to as many as 50 others, and they just go to town on the colony. Colony. These violent thugs can wipe out the entire bee population of thousands in just a few hours. Being stung by one of these monster hornets is no picnic either. Apparently, the pain of their sting has been likened to being stabbed by a red-hot needle. And as if that didn't sound unpleasant enough, the sensation is going to hang about for days on end, and the sight of the sting will swell up and hurt a lot for ages after the actual sting occurs. So, you get to relive that experience over and over and over again, you lucky things. Number 2. Bed Bugs Now, everyone has heard at least one horror story of hotel bed bugs. These are becoming such a huge problem in New York City alone that even super fancy hotels are suffering from the scourge of the skin crawling bed bug epidemic. These disgusting biters hide themselves in cracks and crevices, behind headboards, and even under mattresses, all waiting for their prey to slip into a slumber when they then bite, leaving horribly itchy and unpleasant bumps all across the body of their victims. And they even stow away in your luggage. Just when you think that you've escaped the gross bed bug hotel, you then discover that they've crept into your suitcase and now they live with you. You're going to need an exterminator stat. Some techniques for getting rid of these things include vacuuming them up, in any areas that they have been, but this has to be done daily and the vacuum thoroughly emptied and the contents disposed of outside every single time. Putting things that are infested into a tumble dryer on the highest heat may help to kill off the bugs, but be careful of melting things and always follow instructions. Or you can put things in the freezer to kill an infestation. Steam cleaning, as long as it's at least 130 degrees Fahrenheit, may help, but sometimes you're just going to have to get rid of that mattress and probably your house and set everything on fire. Number 1. Baboon Spiders here we have baboon spiders. Baboons are jerks, if that is any indication. The baboon spider is actually related to the tarantula. They're big and hairy and have huge and scary looking fangs, you know, like proper cartoon Halloween spiders. They're found all across Africa, in grasslands, woodlands, and dry scrublands, where they make burrows under stones and in other underground places. They use their big fangs to help them dig into the earth, and they do, however, also have a nasty bite, with some fairly unpleasant venom. If you're unlucky enough to disturb one of these spiders, they may well give you a bite to warn you off. That warning, though, will last for a few days, and it's going to hurt pretty bad. But that'll teach you to go around annoying big spiders now, won't it? So that's all from the deadlier side of insect life. Probably best not to mess with any of them, though. They may not appreciate your advance. Which of these horror stories is going to keep you awake tonight? Let me know all about it in the comments section down below. Be sure to check out the other cool stuff that's showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time. I love you.